Hey friend, welcome to Quest Givers, and today we're going to talk about handling character advancement, right? Uh, it can be as boring as adding up your hit points, which, or it can be as interesting as doing certain things in the game to make that advancement count and be interesting for the characters. If you're looking for adventure, excitement, thrills, and a dice-rolling good time, sit back and enjoy the next few minutes with Quest Givers DM Scotty and DMG. They're taking you on an epic journey through the role-playing experience every Friday. Learn the ways of the Game Master, the Dungeon Master, and delve into the minds of the players. Grab the modules each month to support the channel and play the campaign with your gaming group. You're sure to get hooked on adventure. It's very important that you feel out how your group likes to do things. Some people, they just want to move on to the higher, you know, give me my plus one and let's go. Um, other people, it's more a thematic experience. They want to be immersed in what's happening. So you really have two advancement systems that DMs typically use and we, we're really using Dungeons and Dragons as an example, but there are others to these. But the, the core two is you've got an XP system for the player and a milestone system. Now, they can be the same. You earn experience points and you gain levels. But some people will do it. You earn XP for each thing that you do. And some people at the end of the adventure, you upgrade to the next level. So if you're playing a campaign, you're going to say, well, this campaign is going to be one through levels one through six so we're gonna have 12 12 adventures in this campaign so every two adventures you just go up a level um, whereas in the xp systems like every time the characters do something they earn experience and they all then you know add their experience up and then level when the experience is the correct amount so those are the two different kind the two different styles of actually doing it but there, there's one other interesting one which our friend Hankren over at Runehammer Games has in ICRPGs. Can you tell us a little bit, because you've played a lot of ICRPG, tell us a little bit about how that actually functions. Yeah, it's, it's, it's really interesting actually. He, uh, ICRPG, which is Index Card RPG, he handles it like loot. Right, so um, there is uh, a more optional uh, system that he has put forward in uh, his worlds book, which is the different worlds of ICRPG. But he, it, for the basic game, it's all loot based. So if you get more hit points, it's not, you know, a, it's not you've been a milestone or you got the experience points. It's you find the loot that gives you, and the way the game is kind of set up is. Everything, the, the loot is very thematic. You know, he likes to be thematic with the loot. And so it ends up being very th th thematic, sorry. It ends up being very thematic, but it's also mechanically driven. So it's a very interesting kind of hybrid of the system. What's interesting about that from, what, from my perspective is it, it's, it's helping advance the story. So you can bring those thematic elements into it. And I think that's also with the milestone um, dm style you know it's milestones within the story so it's a more story based sort of way of gaining power within the certain points of of the campaign the other system where you're earning points obviously you are rising up in your abilities and that is also going to aid the story but you know it you then as the gm need to kind of twist that to how how do they go from level one to level two? Even though they've got all the points, how can you make that a story thing? How can you, you know, how do they advance in level from one level to the next? Now, I saw Scotty do something very interesting in one of the online games that he's played with Jake from Mini Terrain Domain. Tell us a little bit about what that, that was and why you did it that way. Glad you mentioned that because I was going to bring that up. So I'm glad you mentioned it. Yeah. So I'm playing um, Forge. I was playing Forge, Forge, Forge of Fury with uh, Jake at Mini Terrain Domain. He's the DM, a fantastic DM. Uh, we got V, the Crafting Muse, and other people with us. So great people. Um, and uh, I, I really wanted to role play my level ups, right? Because um, Jake was using Milestone Experience, so when he felt that we had achieved enough experience, he gave us a level. 
which is the one I prefer, but you know, that's for you to decide in your own campaign. Somebody, some people like really concrete, you know, ways of like XP. Other people like me like it to be about the theme and the story. So when I would level up, uh, I would have my character um, act in different ways. Like for, for example, my, my paladin is, was a soldier who was in a horrible battle, the last survivor of a horrible, horrible battle, and he, an angel came to him and he kind of felt like he was the last person in the world, but he, uh, he, he, he curled up into a ball and was just kind of, he almost lost himself, but then this angel appeared and he found, he found the way of the paladin hood and that's when he became a paladin. Well, he's had no training, no experience in the scripture and that kind of thing. So it's very, it was very visceral for him, right? So as I've leveled up, he's had a really hard, like I played him like he doesn't know how to use his power. Like he, he goes nuts. He goes crazy. Uh, sometimes uh, when he was when he was first leveling up, he couldn't he he couldn't handle the power. And when he first cast a spell, I had stuff. You know, I had him uh, react in strange ways, and I had uh, interesting stuff where uh, he was having a dream about. Uh, you know the the realm of his goddess, and he woke up and he was floating above the ground, and the characters had to try to figure out how to get him back on the ground. You know, and he didn't know how to do it. He just ha it just happened. So, yeah, um, when you're playing, you know, help. You can help the DM by just you know the DM will be like, oh, you know, you level up. You know, guys, if you guys reach a point where you level up, and it, it's kind of it can kind of be up to you to to play on that. You can just kind of go like, eh, okay, I leveled up, I get my plus one. Or you could actually work that into the story with your characters, which is what I've been doing. Uh, I've been very interesting. I just leveled to, I just got to level five and I kind of got separated from the party. So I, did a, I didn't do a mini quest, quest, but I did a description what I was doing while the other characters were you know, uh, off because uh, I had my eye thing. So I was kind of off for a few weeks. So I, I described how I got this call from my goddess and I went to this crystal cavern and I had the, the goddess I worship is like waterfalls and peace. So this magical waterfall was in there and I had this all this description and um, I, uh, it, it kind of, the, the level up actually tied me in to a certain quest that's happening in the story. So that was really cool and interesting. I kind of worked that out with the DM. So that was really cool and interesting and just a really fun way to do that and to also give your DM like st material they can use in the game. I actually used to do a mixture of the points and the milestone system. You used to note down all the XP that you got while you were in the dungeon killing things but you only leveled when you went to town. So it kind of forced the players to go, right, we need to regroup and, you know, get our, you know, fight our way back out. Because other, what, when they're not earning experience, they're kind of like delving too far. And this is kind of the elastic band that kind of pulls them back and goes, right, you need, you're going to need bigger weapons. You're going to need to sort of get more rations. And so I use that mechanism to kind of, you know, get both the XP system and the milestone system. So I, I had a DM once who he, he wouldn't give you the level unless you, the whole party had reached that point. So your, your level would stop until everyone had reached that level and then everyone would earn again. So there's, there's, there's various different ways of doing it. Um, but the key to, to bear in mind is what is it doing for the story? You know, the advancement of these characters. If in one session they go from level one through to six and you've got 12 sessions planned, there's a bit of a problem. <laughs> you need to, you need to not giving them 10,000 experience points for killing a goblin. Sort of you need to like hold that back a bit, I think. <laughs> But that comes to defining a baseline of experience. You know, a lot of the times the books don't really give you an idea of what the minutiae of things give you experience. Like if they break down a door, what's that worth in experience? Because that, that takes, um, you know, you have to come up with the idea. You have to roll a check to kick down the door. You know, you, you've achieved something, uh, you know, and, and, and when I was designing 70 system, that part of the achievement system was, well, you should get something for being creative or achieving things in the game. So, because in D&D, &D, I always just 
created a baseline. This is what gets 100 experience. This is what gets 500 experience, etc. Um, and so pe people know what the currency is worth because XP is like gold. And it used to be one gold was one experience point. So think about that from that defining the, <laughs> the level of XP. So one of the things that people don't tend to give experience for, and I mean, if you do or you don't, just tell us in the argument section below, but for social and exploration. Those, those are two of the pillars, you know, of, of the game. Like, you know, there's combat, there's, there, there's the social interactions, the role playing, and then there's kind of exploration. So you want to, if you just do the combat, you know, that, that's very easy to do because it's like you kill a goblin, you get five experience, whatever it is. So, but when you, you know, when the other things are much harder to, and that's, it's always been kind of a conundrum in the game, I think, for D&D. It's like, how much do you award for, there are suggestions and people come up with their own, most people I've seen come up with their own systems. Uh, the milestone system kind of avoids that, but, um, because you just wrap it all into one. You know, I, I wrap it into the story. That's all part of the story and it just flows and the combat, the exploration and the role playing, uh, the social interactions, that all just adds up. And, you know, uh, sometimes there's more of one than other. So you might have a very combat heavy session. Uh, generally, I try to get a little bit of all of them, you know, uh, exploration and that kind of thing. Um, but, you know, sessions are gonna be weighted sometimes one way or the other. But, you, you know, if, if they if they have a whole session and it's not combat, like how do you award? You know, if you're not using the milestone system, how do you award? So that that can be really tricky. Uh, another thing is, you know, I don't think people think up about at the level ups like like magic items or or, or or gear because not only are you getting better, they're finding all this cool stuff and players love magic items. They love to find cool stuff, but you can really get Mon to Monty Hall with it. You gotta be really careful. Like for example, like 5e, you gotta be really careful with how much magic, how many magic items you give out and how powerful they are because it can really skew the game. Like in 4e, you gotta, you, get, you had to toss them out like candy. If you weren't tossing them out like candy, the players were falling falling way behind in the power level. So you literally had to do that. So, but 5e, you know, <clears throat> someone could go the whole game and just not even have a magic sword or have a plus one sword. A plus one sword is still good, you know, when you're level 20. I mean, you'd rather have, you know, a kick-ass sword, but uh, you know, but it's not plus five, horrible Scotty. if you have a plus one sword, right? So you gotta be careful about that. But, but uh, yeah, definitely think about in your game system, how you're going to dole out stuff, you know, magic items. Um, because, and there's also a big difference between, you know, permanent magic items and consumables. You know, consumables, they're going to drink that stuff up, you know, like hill potions and that stuff. Uh, that stuff usually goes pretty quick. But, uh, you know, the stuff like magic swords or armor or weapons or cloaks and rings and all that kind of stuff. So think about what you're going to do. And also, uh, you know, uh, you want character advancement to be cool because. The character advancement as far as like, you know, when you get your powers, that's awesome. Like, oh, I got this new power or whatever. And, oh, but I got this generic sword. I got this generic plus one sword. You know what I'm saying? Why not give the player uh, something that's tailored to their character? You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, give them, you know, maybe they're, they like to, you know, uh, um, attack a lot of enemies, give them a sword that can hit multiple enemies and that kind of thing. So, so, you know, give them that kind of stuff. And it just, that really makes that advancement memorable and awesome. So, uh, it's, it's kind of much better than just giving out generic items. You know, it's uh, in a pinch, you could do that, but, uh, really tailored items are nice. And, uh, one other thing, one thing I, I've been doing in my 5e campaign is, I don't like to just find a bunch of magic items around like you would in maybe previous editions of D&D because you can really skew the game. So I'll have maybe consumables around that would be the place replace, you know, magic swords and armor and that kind of stuff they find. But they'll get kind of almost at milestone points, they'll get like magic items, okay? So I had one thing where the players helped a dragon, they were kind of helping each other. The dragon, the dragon was evil, but they were getting something in the dragon. It was a, you know, uh, the quid pro quo situation. So they were getting something, but the dragon was also getting something. And so I had the dragon give them something from their horde. So that made sense that the dragon would pick something that was 
tailored to that character. So I was able to, right, I was able to give them things that were tailored to, the, it wasn't just they found this random junk in a pile. It was like the dragon picked out stuff for them uh, out of its hoard. So yeah, that was, that was a great uh, uh, point. And I've had other situations like that where I give out magic items at some kind of interesting story point. So definitely consider that because that will be so memorable when you, you know, you think about that item. Where did I get this item? Oh, I didn't just find it in some junk pile. You know, uh, the dragon gave it to me. You know, the freaking dragon gave me this thing. This is badass. So yeah, so think about that kind of advantage. Sorry, I've gone on. <laughs> Gareth, would you like to add anything? <laughs> well, I mean, that's, I, I, I say, you know, with magic items, questify it. So questify is basically, don't just give it to them. They got to go on a quest to get the thing. You know, um, it's the reward for doing the quest they let them let the let the old man in the village subtly hint that the badass has this magical sword you know oh i think he's got a really good sword <laughs> oh really good means magical <laughs> um use those sort of things so that you know the, the players are motivated to find these things um or you know the the big bad has um a locker that's you know got the sword in it and it's some puzzle to unlock the sword or something to that effect there's you you you've you've not created so much of a barrier but you've basically created this problem that they need to solve this mini quest to get this magical item that advances their character because as you say you know the magic items are a form of advancement but basically different game systems have different types of xp and advancement systems so Look at it carefully, what you're playing, and don't be afraid to change it if it doesn't work for the way you and your game, your players, like to play the game. So thank you very much for joining us once again in Quest Givers. Check out our website, questgivers.com. And of course, you can find all our modules that are available there, including the current one, which is Knights of Old. And we'll see you in the next video. Take care, guys. So glad you visited us. 